Upon the release of the 32 and 64-bit gaming systems, gaming was going to take a huge turn into something new, a little thing we call the Third Dimension. And everyone was throwing their hats into the ring. Nintendo with Mario 64, and the worst 3D Zelda, Sega with Nights into Dreams, Konami with... okay, not Konami. But Sony with their debut game console, the PlayStation, came and delivered what people believed to be some of the best classic 3D platformers. Spyro the Dragon, and of course, Crash Bandicoot. Based on the footage I'm showing you, you can tell that I'm playing the Insane Trilogy. I'm sure you're wondering why not just review all three? That would be too much effort, you Claude. This <laughs> this way we can get three videos out of it. Now I know I am pretty late to the Crash Bandwagon when it comes to making a review about the games, but come on, with one game every three weeks, it takes a while to get around to them sometimes. I say after I immediately talk about not putting any effort into getting more games done. That being said, let's get into it. This week on TGRS here on Internet Nobodies, I am your host, James, and this week we're going to be taking a look at the hardest game since Cuphead and Dark Souls, Crash Bandicoot. The game starts with Dr. Neocortex experimenting on various animals with his Cortex Vortex, until something goes wrong and Crash Bandicoot is born and he escapes. But back in the lab, Cortex decides to test his machine on Tana, Crash's I'm not a furry butt girlfriend. And that's it. Crash wakes up on the beach and makes his way to the castle to save his girlfriend and stop Cortex along the way. And as simple as the plot is, the gameplay itself is also incredibly simple. You go through these hallway-like stages while spinning to kill enemies and breaking as many boxes as you can along the way. You pick up these Wumpa fruits that look like mangoes, and every hundred gives you an extra life, and these tiki masks named Aku Aku, which give you more hits before you die. That's really it. For how simple this game is, it really doesn't feel like Dark Souls like everyone says it is. Jokes aside, this game can be pretty hard at times, but if you're a skilled gamer like I am, it shouldn't pose any challenges for you. Each level has a certain amount of boxes in the stages, and if you break every single box in a level, then you will get a shiny gem which adds to your completion percentage and adds the pathway to the castle for the secret ending. Which I didn't actually do, so don't expect me to show it. This is unscripted. I have actually done it. Uh, I've only 100%ed Crash Bandicoot once. Uh, that was back on my PSP a long time ago. Like, I uh, freshman or sophomore year in high school. I want to say sophomore. I uh, yeah, I had the PS1 classic version downloaded, and I 100%ed the game within a week, and I was so fucking proud of myself for that. And I haven't had the patience to do it again. <laughs> I've gotten close, but. I was pretty proud of myself for that. That's how I know that it's a secret ending. There are colored gems to collect as well, and these will be a little bit trickier to snag. You have to break every box in the level along the way without dying, which is a little throwback to the original game. On the PS1, if you died at any point in any level, you weren't able to pick up the gem at the end. And that's the way it is here with the colored gems because they are more vital to completion than the silver gems are. The level design is really awesome and is pretty unique at times. I like the boulder chase levels which are some of the most stressful levels ever made. The controls on the Insane Trilogy are really good, but for me I love playing Crash 1 with the D-pad, which worked out fine for a while but for some reason my Xbox controller's D-pad started to have issues and I had to switch to full analog. Uh, sidebar, my Xbox controller works fine? I don't know what the deal was, it just wasn't working appropriately. Now, this is really only a problem for me, but Crash 1 wasn't compatible with analog controls originally, so I got used to the D-pad when I originally played it on my beloved PSP. So it is more of a muscle memory issue here. There are a few times in this game when I felt like the hitboxes were a little bit off, sometimes getting hit when I felt I shouldn't have, but for the most part, it's a pretty solid experience, and this remake is incredibly faithful to it. Now, I am not going to turn into Matthew and play all of the songs in the game, you can hear them under my voiceover, but the soundtrack is pretty good. It's very exotic and whimsical, and also kinda mysterious. One of my favorite parts of this remake is the fact that they added Coco as a playable character for the game. She's fucking adorable, and plays exactly like Crash, so it's not like there's any downside to playing as her. Shortly after release, they also added the level Stormy Ascent, which was actually an unfinished level from the original game. And you know what? 
I beat the level on PS4, died once playing it here on PC, and said fuck it. I didn't even go to the effort to 100% this game. Beating Cortex was good enough for me for this review. This game, and frankly every Crash game, is way better than Spyro the Dragon in my opinion. I've always been a much bigger fan of linear platformers than 3D collectathons, anyways. And lucky me, they have recently announced, released, Crash 4 It's About Time, which is going to have a new take on the hallway based level design of the classic trilogy. I'm going to add here, I have actually started playing it. The game released yesterday as of me recording this. Man, it's good so far. I'll <laughs> review coming at some point. If you want to play Crash 1, it's easy. The Insane Trilogy is on PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC, plus emulators and such as well. Just, just play it. Thank you so much for watching TGRS. I've been waiting to finish this game for a while and I finally decided to take a look at it here. I figured since I just finished playing it on PC, yeah, I might as well do it now. Since I like this more than Spyro, you would imagine that I would have reviewed it before now, but oh well, that's just the way the Crash Bandicoots. Is that how puns work? Come and join us back here next week for something from Terrell, so I will see you all then.